What is going to make silver ignite? What's going to make SLV, that silver paper market price, go up? And I saw Tommy Boy. You remember the movie Tommy Boy? And that one person said, the guarantee's got to be on the box. I need the warranty on the box. And Tommy Boy says, you know, I can take a dump in a box and write guarantee on it. I have the time. I consider that guarantee as the price of SLV. It just gives us that little bit of comfort, a little bit of a security to know that no matter what, we're always going to get spot price. That SLV price is the rock bottom dollar. But when are we going to be able to separate from it? What's going to make SLV go to the moon? And what's it going to take to make physical be where it should also? Is it Tesla? Is it Tesla coming out and saying, hey, I can buy silver now, just like they did to Bitcoin and they kind of hinted at gold? Is that what's going to make this thing go to the moon? I love going to Trading View and I look up SLV and I love when it's green. I love seeing it go up and when it goes down, it kind of hurts. But whenever I see it go down, I also go to findbullionprices.com because I want to see what the dealers are selling for and which dealers have coins or rounds or bars in stock. But I also want to get away from that. I would love not to have to go to findbullionprices.com and not to go to Appmex to see what they have. I would love to have a benchmark and that's what SLV is supposed to be. It's supposed to be that price where we always know above that price expect 30% premiums. And if we get to that point, that'd be great. Everybody's on the same playing field. So let's talk about end the Fed, silver squeeze, and take delivery. Now, I've heard some people say the only way to make this happen is you have to be buying new silver, new 999 silver, freshly minted stuff, direct from the mint or direct from a dealer. That's the only way we can squeeze supply. If we're out there buying existing silver or 90% silver that hasn't been made since 1964, we're not really hurting the supply. But I disagree because just like mining silver is costing more, that new silver is harder to find, so it should be more expensive. And yes, if we go buy it right from the miners or we buy it right from the dealers, the market doesn't get a chance to grab it. So there you go, that works. But I think also going and finding the deals on eBay or from a person you know that is willing to sell it, that also helps because as silver climbs, that silver is gonna come out also. Just like the miners have to go dig and find new silver, as silver goes up, people start to dig into their drawers and into the safe and find that silver just like a miner would now it has value so i'm going to go through my grandparents coin jar i'm going to go looking for more coins because now they're more valuable so it's not just the miners that are going to bring it to the market when the silver price gets to say 50 dollars, a lot more silver is going to come out of the woodwork from everybody's homes so there's another inlet for silver. So it doesn't matter whether you're buying this stuff and holding it or you're buying the new stuff and holding it. You are holding as much silver as you can and taking it off the market. So you don't have to be only buying new silver. Buy any silver you can because the other thing is that 90% and the 92.5% that can be refined. You know, a company could go buy all they can and refine it. Right? I don't want to see all that 90% get melted. I would love for that 90% to end up in the hands of people like me. People that want to build books and collect and pass this on to their kids. Like a 1955D Roosevelt dime. Nobody cares about it, but I need a couple to finish a book. So I need those 1955D dimes. Also 1955D quarters. I need both of those, so I would, I would hate to see a boatload of those go and get melted. So if you have them, send me a message. <laughs> I see the melting of 90% silver similar to the melting of nickels. 
Right now, the melt value of a nickel is over a nickel. But it would be foolish for somebody to melt it down and have 75% copper and 25% something else as a blob, right? The nickel is valuable because it's a known purity and a known weight. So it's already done. Like you don't need to melt and extract the copper and extract the nickel. Just have it as a unit and you can trade with that. That has a value. So melting 90% while it does result in pure silver that an industry could use, I think it's better in its current state. That's my opinion, but again, I love coins. So actually that leads us to the next question about the 2021 Morgan and Peace dollars. I've heard they're coming out as 999 fine silver. What a heartbreaker, right? Like we wish those, at least I do, I wish those things were 90% just like they were. They just changed a number on the front. That would have been magical to have something that looks like the 1921, but is nice, new, pristine, mint state. But now it's going to be a 999 fine silver round, which again, it'll still be extremely cool. I think it'll help the community. It'll help the collecting world. But I do wish it was 90% just to keep that authenticity. But if the mint thinks it's more economical or it's easier to make it out of 999, so be it. Let's do it. And a lot of people actually prefer 999. So they're probably smarter than me, right? They're doing it for a reason, even though it's not exactly what I would want. But I'm excited for them to come out. So now for a channel update. I had every intention to get to a thousand subs, monetize, and then we'd keep rolling. But I'm changing my focus. I'm now saying I'm going to dedicate to making videos until SLV is at $50. That's my job. I have to stay in the game till SLV hits 50. Part of the reason I'm not worrying about monetizing is I like to use music. I like to use video and a lot of my videos have copyright claims anyways. So I'm not really counting on being able to monetize when I get to a thousand. So I'm going to enjoy everything I can. I'm going to do everything I want. And who cares if I have copyright claims? I'm not worried about being monetized. I'm here to share my knowledge and just my joy about silver. And if I can help this much, if I can help this much on getting silver to 50, that's my mission. So I'm here to share my knowledge. I want to learn. I want to grow. But I'm not concerned about my channel getting up there. I want SLV to get up there. That's the new mission for me. So let's talk about toning silver. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. I guarantee you, I toned this last night and it turned out beautiful. But I also, previously I toned a kilo stacker and I turned it blue, I didn't like it, and I overcooked it last night where it is just gunmetal gray. It's not what I intended, but it's still silver. I'm not happy with this. This is my first blunder where, again, I toned something and I think it made it worse. But this I love. This turned out exactly like I wanted it to. So why do I do this? It's not sunshine and rainbows. It's not right every time. And this doesn't necessarily make the value more. But what it does do is it basically burns the bridge. If I tone it, I know I have to own it. Is that a good line? If I tone it, I have to own it, which means many people don't want it anymore. It's not that generic thing that they can trust. It's not like every other one and that's what they want. So many people won't want a toned silver bar, but a few people will. And that's why I do it. I do it because it makes me prouder to own it. Plus, it's no longer a commodity. If this was straight from Scottsdale and looked like every other one, you would say, I'm selling it for 30, they're selling it for 31, okay, I'll buy from you. But if they went to 29.75, you'd buy from them. It's a commodity. But since this one's unique and has some color to it, somebody might be willing to pay 32, right? Because it's no longer just like all the others. If this perfect coloring appeals to you, you may be willing to pay 32. So that's why I tone some generic silver because again, I get 
happier about it. I am more proud to own it. Plus, I see in the future somebody might pay more to get it from me. That's why I tone generic silver. But again, it's not always going to work out the way I want it to. This is still cool, but it was a lot cooler before I started messing with it. So the last item to discuss are channel stickers. I did get some made, but they're embarrassingly small. I thought I was being smart. I went the cheaper route. I went for the two by two because they could fit in a sheet. What I'm gonna look for now is more trading my sticker in a flip with two or three little coins, whether they're dimes, pennies, a nickel, anything that can fit in a standard envelope that's where I'm gonna head. I'm gonna send these things out, and then again, if the person wants to send them back, they can send something that's a small coin, something that fits in an envelope. So that's what I hope to get out of my channel. I hope to be part of this community. I hope to build relationships, trade with people. You know, if you have something that I need and I have something that you need, that's a simple trade. And plus, if silver becomes extremely hard to find, I want to be the one that can give you $10 face quarters. If that's all you need, we can do a sale, right? I want to get to that point. I don't know if I'll get to the auction level, but I want to at least be a source for generic or common date, you know, something that's easy, very liquid, transactionable. You're not going to get it and worry about condition. It's just these are 1964 quarters add them to your stack. That's the kind of stuff I want to trade and sell within this community. I've sold on eBay, but I'd much rather keep it tight. Like I want this group to hold the silver. So that's what I'm hoping to get out of my channel. Again, I love this community. I'm so happy to be here and I will see you guys next time. Hi, bud. Hey, bud.